back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. Obviously, if you guys watch the show, you know that I rag on Hollywood a lot, rightfully so, in my opinion. And because of that, I always like to flip the switch a little bit and share some good stories with you too, so that you know that there are still some good role models in that industry somewhere. There's a lot of talented people. Would I say that they are good people? I don't know, but there are a few of them and I wanna highlight them. Because like it or not, Hollywood, the entertainment industry at large, actors, celebrities, they are extremely powerful and influential. And I think a lot of people on the right can just say, no, they don't matter, don't focus on them, but they do matter because our culture makes them matter. And so we should support the ones that actually stand up for something that we believe in. And I would hope that these very important influential people would set good examples. Often that is certainly not the case, but today, it is the case for two of them, which we have to discuss. Before we do, though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you've not already, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section episode. All right, so a couple weeks ago, we did a whole episode about Henry Cavill, AKA Superman, the Witcher, the heartthrob of basically every woman in America, maybe the world. And we talked about his decision not to do sex scenes, specifically saying that he does not understand them, and he thinks that most of the time they are just for shock value, that they're unnecessary, which I completely, completely agree and I love. The point is, I was already even more on the Henry Cavill train after I did that episode, and then I saw this video, which is just spectacular. It's the little things, guys, it's the little things. Henry Cavill stands up whenever a lady walks into a room, mm. and he's been consistent with that all the way through. I made two movies with him, and I'm in a room with him all the time when I'm making those movies. <laughs> It's like he doesn't even think about it. Like it's just second nature. Like he's that good of a guy that he's like, oh, that's so nice that you noticed that. I, I forgot that I did. Like that's perfect. You're a perfect handsome man. Every woman alive believes it. It's just, I was even talking to my husband about it. He was like, oh God, I love him so much. He was like, yeah, he's a stud. Right. You are a beautiful male specimen. Everybody agrees. Somebody commented and said he is such a class act. We need more men like him. I will always say that, yes. It's also so perfect because he's obviously like very conventionally handsome. People love him, he plays Superman. But he's also like such a geek and loves video games and loves doing movies that are directly in line with his interests and the stories that he loves, which is just so endearing and great. And I think it makes audiences connect with him and the stories that he's telling much easier, which is just very cool as an actor. Anyway, somebody else commented and said, Henry Cavill, peak masculinity. And he truly is. Like he is this big, strong, relatively burly guy. Not like burly in the sense of like has a big beard, but he's a bigger guy. And yet he has this very understated yet secure sense of confidence and self. He seems kind. He's obviously very polite and thoughtful based on what all of his fans have seen. And I just love it. Like I love these stories. They are so good for my heart and soil. Sorry, soul. Actually, I did mean heart and soil. Ever since I have been more cautious about the products that I use, I've been reflecting on how amazing our bodies are. We are like a finely tuned machines with each part playing a crucial role in keeping us ticking along. Staying healthy and eating right can sound exhausting and overwhelming, which is why I I am so grateful for my organ supplements from Heart and Soil. Organs are the most nutrient-rich foods on the planet. You can get 100 times more nutrients from organ meat than from muscle meat. Our ancestors were overall healthier and stronger than we are today. And what was their secret? Eating animals from nose to tail. Heart and Soil offers a wide range of supplements to help with gut, digestion, brain, sleep, weight loss, and more. They have something for everyone's unique health goals. Now, I've been on this train for a while. I've been taking organ meat supplements for a bit, but I just switched over to Heart and Soil's Her Package, and I love it. I've obviously talked about this, but I'm trying to get my hormones as in check as possible after years of endocrine disrupting toxins all over my life. And so far, I love it. And I know it can be overwhelming to add in a new supplement to your routine, and I know it can be a lot of pills, but I break mine up throughout the day, which makes it super easy and attainable and keeps me on track. And of course, I love that heart and soil supplements are made from grass-fed, grass-finished, and regeneratively raised beef organs. That is the best that you can get. Try them today, and your health can thank me later. So reclaim your birthright to a radical health today. Go to heartandsoil.co and use code Cooper for 10% off your first order. Discount applies to one-time purchases. Again, that is heart soil.co use code Cooper for 10% off your first order. You will feel so good, so healthy, just as good as I feel reading this wholesome story to you. And that is what most women mean when they say that they want a traditional or masculine man. Like most women are not trying to bag that huge alpha bro that is literally busting out of his ill-fitted suit while he's hyped up on roids. Like that is not the masculinity that we are going for. Masculinity is about the way that a man treats a woman and holds himself more than anything else. It is wild to me that I am so excited and shocked by a man who has traditional manners around women. I was watching that clip on Twitter and I was like, you know, giggling to myself. I was like, that's so cute. I should use that in an episode. And I was like, why am I even stoked about this? This should be normal. It's actually kind of sad. But if you've been paying attention, I'm sure that you've noticed that there's just been a major decline in politeness and chivalry in your own life. And there are obviously countless think pieces about this. Like women don't need your chivalry and etiquette was used to control women. You know, it's an arm of the patriarchy. These manners are outdated and unnecessary in the modern age. Women don't deserve them anymore. Whatever, they're gone they've evaporated for whatever reason. Which is why 
the most basic things stand out to us, like a man opening doors for a woman. When a man takes a woman out on a date and doesn't just honk the horn outside of her house or text her and say, yeah, here, but when he actually goes up to the door, rings the doorbell, and literally picks her up and brings her out to her, that's crazy. Why is that insane? But it is. Also, a good handshake and actually looking somebody directly in the eye, being respectful to elders, it is the bare minimum at this rate, but it speaks volumes in our current society and our very upside down world. Just like it speaks volumes, sadly, when I hear a female celebrity getting excited about having kids. How is that news? It is wild that that is something that we consider news. I'm talking about this because actress Dakota Fanning, who I think is one of the greatest child stars ever, and she just aged and matured so gracefully and so healthily as did her younger sister, but she recently did an interview for Porter Magazine, and you just have to hear what she said about her future. Being an actor is a huge part of my identity. I don't really know who I am without it, but I also have a desire to set up my life and career so that I always have a choice. Having kids is probably more important to me than anything, even being an actor. Fanny added that in the meantime, she's trying to take on challenging roles and push herself. I'm trying to push myself and keep saying yes to things that make me uncomfortable, to keep going to places for long periods of time that maybe I'm scared to do because God willing, one day it won't be as easy. That is so thoughtful. It is so amazing. And the entire time that I was reading that, I was going, oh my God, it's me. That's literally me. And she also was struck such a clear and healthy balance that I think gets lost in all of the right and left noise about femininity and motherhood and all of that. The right will often tell women that their value only lies in being a wife and a mother. And it's become this like aesthetic trad wife thing. If you're not flitting around your garden in a cottage core dress making sourdough, you are not worthy as a woman. And I know that that is an extreme, but that is an extreme that many women and men espouse on social media. And then on the left, they believe that that kind of life is oppression and that women's value is working in a cubicle, getting day drunk with their friends and being a girl boss. Like neither of those need to be true. And for many women like myself, it is far less black and white. I have wanted to be a mom more than anything in my whole life for my entire life. But my identity, much like Fanning's, is also very much in my work. And it has been literally since I was eight years old and I love it. And I know that especially now I'm doing something that I believe is really important in our culture. And so I don't want to stop doing that. Even with that knowledge, even with my identity being rooted in my work and you know being passionate about it on a broader level, other than just me enjoying it, the idea and my aspirations for motherhood have always reigned supreme. And that might not be the case for every woman, which is totally fine. Everybody has to find their own way. But I love that she stated her priority so firmly and clearly and showed that balance that she obviously loves her job, she loves what she's doing, she's still prioritizing it, but that her goals of motherhood are more important and that one day that will take its place, which is just so healthy and so wonderful. And what shines through here is her genuine excitement and intentionality about how she's approaching her career as she enters this stage of life. She's not assuming that nothing will change. She's not talking down to people. I don't think that she's trying to pass off her future kids to a nanny. She's doing everything she can right now to reach the goals that she wants to achieve and also prepare to be a mom. I was remembering something that I saw on social media a couple of weeks ago and it was Lily Allen. And she's that singer that did the, I feel, I feel very much, that song. She was talking about having kids and she said, yeah, having kids just ruined my career. And that's such a, that is the third saddest thing I've heard today. It's just such a hard thing to hear because obviously you chose to prioritize your kids, which is a great thing. But rather than framing it in that way, she framed it as they were a detriment to her career. So I love seeing the flip side where Dakota is saying, I'm acknowledging that that is going to be more important. I'm excited about that. I'm doing everything I can right now to set myself up for that. That is my next stage of life and I can't wait. Like we just never hear that. And that stood out to a lot of people, even on the hellhole that is Reddit. One person said, being a mom, this is such a refreshing take. She is speaking from privilege, obviously, because the reason fewer people are having kids is very financially and economically driven. But sometimes it feels like the world has just become very anti-children and pro-career driven life. It's just validating, I guess, to hear others agree and feel that raising a family is an acceptable and satisfying goal. Yes. 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 And it's just crazy to think about because we have obviously fallen so far that moms are insecure about their choices to have children and raise the next generation. Like, do we not hear ourselves? It is absurd. Like, that is one of the most, if not the most, selfless and noble things that you can do. Another person said, I feel this. Similarly, I have seen so many people be quick to blame Ryan Reynolds for railroading Blake Lively's career by making her have kids. When Blake has said since the beginning that she wants to be a mom more than anything, she makes the choice to work as little as she wants. Anecdotally, I work in a male-dominated field. I have been told by women peers that my wanting kids is disappointing. If you have the opportunity to have a great career, of her family, you owe it to other women to take it, which is just so wild. But I understand that sentiment because I have heard those things my entire life. Like you will never be satisfied being a mom and you would obviously be throwing away your career if you had kids. Why would you do that? You know, I hate children. Ooh, why do you want, like whatever it is. I have heard that literally since I was 14 or 15 years old when I started talking to my friends about how excited I was to have kids one day. Now, obviously, like I said, this might not be the path for everyone, 
but it certainly should not be something that is shamed, especially not by other women who are probably just projecting their insecurities onto you. But in a world that has been completely turned upside down is backwards. If you choose to follow a more traditional path, it's ironic, but you will be considered the odd one out because traditional does not mean normal anymore. It is no longer the progressives causing the shock and horror to society, it's people like us. You will be the quirky black sheep, whether it's a man being chivalrous to a woman, which is apparently so outdated and wrong, or whether you are a successful woman saying that having children is more important than your career, whatever it may be. And that's okay. It probably means that you're doing something right. Well guys, I hope you liked that video. Make sure that you like and subscribe to this channel if you have not already. And if you want even more content, you can follow me on Instagram and on Snapchat and on TikTok. See you guys next time. Bye.